Hello all, this is Halloween, and if you love Halloween, it has arrived. You may want to subscribe because I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome costumes without breaking the bank, maybe even using some items you already have at home. In today's episode, we will be recreating the classic monster, an Egyptian mummy, formerly played by Boris Karloff. So this will be the second Boris Karloff style costume that we've made this year. The first being Frankenstein. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we have it. Everything we need to make our mummy. Now you might recognize this white sheet from the costume we made last year, The Bride of Frankenstein. I'm going to be taking this white sheet, dyeing it with tea, and cutting it into strips for my mummy costume. And this here is just a full body. Now, if you type in uh, Google search or whatever, full body cat suit. It has full coverage, only a hole where the face is. Covers the whole entire head. Uh, the hands goes all the way down to the feet. And that's what I'm using for underneath as a base. I have just this scarf. This is gonna give you an idea of what color the sheet should be after we dye it with tea. It's gonna be similar to this. It's gonna look worn um, or aged, I should say. It's gonna look very cool. And then I have this mask that I bought because I thought it'd be a really good prop to use. But we're gonna be making it into sort of an Egyptian mask. And we're gonna just kind of walk around with that like a masquerade. So I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. Let's go ahead and get started. I have begun to steep my tea. I've got a large pot of water on the stove. I'm gonna bring that to a boil and steep the tea. I've got several tea bags here, probably like six or seven. I would recommend family size bags and use a cheap tea like Lipton or Rose, something you can get for a couple bucks at the store to dye any fabrics or stuff like that if you're wanting to use this method. You don't want to use like your echinacea tea or your blackberry peach or whatever you pay a lot of money for. Just use practical, typical, regular black tea. I'm probably going to do about three pots, two or three pots, to cover all of that material. And I'm going to leave it soak for the whole day. And when I come home from work, it should be done. And I will show you the results. This is our finished piece. And as you can see, it's got little tea stains on it. It looks very old now. Um, it's like an off-white or a beige color, and it's perfect. So we're gonna start cutting this fabric into strips. And there's plenty of fabric here to use. Look how cool it looks. Once we cut it, it'll be all frayed and, and very mummy looking so we'll get started on that and i'll take photos as we go you're going to get your best result and it's going to be fast if you do it this way so with your material kind of lay it out kind of flat and you're just going to cut a little bit and then just grab onto it and rip it and just rip it and that's going to give you a nice pretty even strip and that's how I'm doing it for the whole costume so you're going to need a lot of these so we're just going to continue ripping <laughs> So far, so good, and up to this point, it's taken me about 20 minutes so far to create this. So we've done a lot. I've gotten down to the legs. You can see in the upper part, I kind of glued in the center and left the longer part, and these are going to go around me. Now this awesome one-piece cat suit that covers the entire body actually zips in the back so that's going to help us get into our costume quite a bit <laughs> and then when i get down to the legs here i am leaving all these are lo pretty long strips so i'm just gluing down what i would need to wrap on the inner thigh 
and leaving the long part really long because I'm going to put the suit on and kind of measure around me to see how much I actually need to go around my leg. And then the excess that I cut off probably be really good to wrap the arms with. So that's where we're at. Let's keep going. Now we're going to make our mask. Well, we bought this from a costume shop in Cincinnati and I thought it was perfect for what I wanted to do with this mummy costume. So it's just a plastic mask on a stick. So you can kind of carry it around like a masquerade. We are going to add to it and make it into a sort of like a King Tutankhamun mask. So I've got a couple pieces of cardboard here that I've cut to size. You're gonna need some hot glue. Of course, you're going to need some Crayola Model Magic. I've got a couple of different kinds of ribbon here. They're both navy blue. One's velvet, one is not. One's a little thicker than the other also. I got a newspaper because we're going to be doing some paper mache and with that you're just going to need some basic flour and water. No particular kind, just all-purpose flour and water. We're going to do old-fashioned paper mache for this. And can you believe a newspaper costs $4.28 and it's not even a Sunday paper. Anyway, now uh, I'm going to use a rolling pin and a cutting board to roll out my Crayola Model Magic just like you would with a pizza dough. And I'm going to also be using some duct tape. So let's get this going. I'll take progress shots as we go. My putty on here, my Crayola Model Magic is not dry. That's okay. It doesn't need to be dry for you to start paper macheing over it. I've got my flour and water here for our paper mache. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started with that. You want it like the consistency of glue, not too dry, or you're gonna have like a dough. You want it just a little bit thick so that it will be pliable and easy to work with.
I woke up this morning and she was dry. And so I started painting her. And I noticed when I painted that there were a few cracks. And I wasn't gonna film this, uh, me fixing the cracks, but I thought it was important to go ahead and film it because you might have the same thing happen. Now, cracks generally occur in your paper mache in areas where you've put the paste on a little too thick. So once it dries, it just cracks because it was so thick in those areas or around the eyes and nose where you have features that are more creased um, if you didn't get the paper quite in there good enough or even if you did, sometimes it just, when it's drying, it doesn't adhere as well and it cracks. So if that occurs and you see it once you start painting or before, you can fix it. You're just going to get yourself some more mixture and some more newspaper and go real thin with the mixture over those areas. If it's a bad crack, I would recommend putting some duct tape uh, over the crack before you put the paper mache on. That way the underlying crack does not cause the surface to crack once you've redone it. And it may. So um, yeah, just put a little bit of duct tape and then paper mache over it. Now I'm gonna wait for this to dry. This is gonna be a late load <laughs> because it's Wednesday already and this costume's not quite done. So uh, this will probably come out you know, well, whenever I can get it out. <laughs> That's how you fix the cracks. And once we're done waiting for that to dry, we'll go ahead and paint it and add on the chin part. Here we have our completed mummy costume. Now I'm going to wait until I put the costume on to wrap my face and hands. I would highly recommend using a fast drying fabric glue to create this costume and maybe having a friend volunteer to help you out because I'm real curvaceous, you may not be, but I have a, having a lot of curves and doing it this way is a very difficult thing. You actually, if you can, you would want to cut the strips and you can go ahead and glue to the front, but you're gonna wanna put the costume on before you start gluing the strips to go around the back. Because if you have a nice caboose like I do, <laughs> and uh, you know, you're a little top heavy like I am. It's going to not fit you if you glue it on while the costume is on the table or on your workspace. You need to have somebody help you glue the fabric around your body so that when you put the costume on, it fits your body. But however, it did work out um, for the most part. So this is it. There's our mask and our makeup is just gonna be around our eyes, real simple. Let's do that. Time for makeup. What a costume, man. It took me a couple weeks to get this one done, but only because I didn't really have help like I was suggesting for you to have. If you're doing the costume, it's best to just get you a fast drying fabric glue so that you can glue the pieces on while it's on your body. And with, an help, with a helper, it shouldn't take that long because you can do the front and they can help you with the back. That's what I would suggest. Uh, with my curvy self and doing it all by myself, it was a little frustrating. I had to stop at times. But you can get a helper. If no one will help you, then they're not very good friends. This is Halloween. We all need to band together and help each other with our costumes, period. Mummy makeup. We're only doing around our eyes, which is fabulous because 
that means the makeup is not going to take us too long. I have put contacts in. I've got one that's bugging me right now, and I think I figured out why. It's got a little bit of a dent in it for some reason. Uh, so it's kind of sliding up and down, but it's going to be fine for pictures. Hopefully it doesn't bother you to look at me. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and glue my eyebrows down. This is going to be a really easy makeup. Obviously, you're not wearing lashes, no winged liner, nothing like that. You're just going to look ugly. And if you need inspiration, Publix or your local grocery store has a great issue of Life magazine out on mummies right now. I had to purchase this. It's so awesome. Now, these are kind of pricey. I think they're like 18 bucks. But if you want... If you want to be a mummy and you want some inspiration or even just to learn about mummies and the culture behind mummifying bodies, here you go. It's got Boris Karloff on the front of it. So he's wearing red contacts. You can wear red or white or white out lenses, whatever you want, or no lenses at all. My mummy face is going to be black, so I wanted the eyes to pop. I mean, it's not based off of Boris Karloff's representation it's more just what i think a mummy would look like that's why i wanted the linen pieces kind of more tightly wrapped you know i could have left it real loose and it would have been a lot easier but i wanted to be wrapped tight like a mummy <laughs> i have my own way of saying things like i've said in previous videos and the way i see it is the way i want to portray it to you anyway gluing down these eyebrows and while we're waiting for this to dry I'll go over what I've got here two colors licorice black Ben Nye this is the Ben Nye aqua and licorice black and I whipped out the Blythe spirit again the Blythe spirit is just gonna be to highlight I'm gonna do the ugly the black mummies I know you've seen them I don't know if they have a picture of them in here let me see if I can find one like a black mummy they turn black so here's kind of one right here. When they turn black, um, usually they're real wrinkled up though. This one on the back here. Here's one, here's a really good one. So I wanna do kind of like the black mummy with the wrinkled face, but there's so many uh, to choose from in this book. That's why I say, if you need inspiration, Ava Perone is even in here. I didn't realize she was 33 when she died. She's in there because they kind of mummified her body. So that's kind of cool. I have dressed up as Evita a couple times. It was for a, um, a thing I did for the PAAT, the Filipino American Association of Tampa. My dad was doing work for a guy that was like, <laughs> I don't know what they call it, but like the headmaster of the whole bunch. He was married to a Filipino. Him and his wife kind of ran the show. So I, uh, they had all kinds of events and stuff and I dressed up as Evita and sang Don't Cry For Me Argentina for their events. And I was also in one of their plays called Lost Angeles. So, and that was, the cool thing about that is that it was at Centro Asturiano. It's a known haunted theater here in downtown Tampa. And it's a beautiful theater. So it was just really nice being up on stage and having that experience because it was such a cool theater. There's stuff about Ava Perone in there if you want to check it out. I'm just waiting for my eyebrows to dry. Um, I love mummies. Who doesn't? I mean, they're just so cool. It's interesting how bodies in certain circumstances and under certain conditions can last thousands of years. When it, typically, if you just have regular embalming process, like what we use here when we bury our departed, they don't last as long. Even the bones break down over time. I think it takes 150 years for all of the, the flesh and stuff. And then the bones, it takes a little bit longer is what I was reading. I can't remember the exact, but if you look online, there's, there's somebody that actually goes to cemeteries and has witnessed in the niches where they put the full body in the niche, they've been draining out fluids because they weren't put away properly. So um, they, the body definitely breaks down. But then you have these 
ancient Egyptians, you can go and look at their body today and it almost looks just like leather. They're just properly embalmed. And you'd think, you know, a thousand years ago or whatever, however long it was, hundreds of years ago, that they wouldn't have what they needed to make that happen. But the embalming process in Egypt was really intensive. They took a lot of care and effort into what they were doing and they would embalm these bodies masterfully. I actually did a live mummification in my history class when I was in culinary school and um, I loved history class because I one of the big we always had a big project at the end and I think I only had to take two history classes so my big project my two big projects were a live mummification in class where I should I acted like I was mummifying a body I brought in a whole paper mache body and I would take out the organs and stuff and put them in jars and they actually pulled the brains out through the nose they would pull the brains out through the nose, place all of the organs into jars inside of some kind of um, formaldehyde mixture, so whatever they had back then that would preserve the organs, and take all of the organs out, even the eyeballs. And when they took the eyeballs out, they would replace it with either like a marble or they would pack it with uh, sawdust. And that is what made the bodies last so long is because you're taking out all of these wet organs that are going to eventually rot inside of you and you're replacing it with basically bags of sawdust and saw a sawdust like material I, I don't i don't know if they had sawdust back then but they were um just packing the bodies with stuff like that straw or whatever they had and then they would close the body back up and then they would rub it down with some kind of solution. It was a whole process that took hours or days to do. And for that reason, we've got mummies today that are hundreds to maybe even a thousand years old. It's kind of cool. If you're into mummies, check out the book that they have right now in grocery store stands. I think you'll really dig it. You know, you learn a lot. I'm going to go ahead and do this a second time. Oh, my second big project in history class was the beheading of Marie Antoinette. <laughs> my dad built me a guillotine. Um, I still have it. It's in my garage right now because eventually that's going to be my workroom. Eventually. <laughs> so it's, it's, just, it's obviously it's not a 16 foot tall guillotine. It's just a smaller replica. And I made Marie Antoinette and I put a balloon in her neck and I paper mache over the balloon and everything so that when the blade came down the balloon would pop and the blood would go everywhere. It was really cool. <laughs> My history teacher really liked it too. I always got A's in history class. So even when I was in high school, I, I just really liked it. So one of my favorite subjects, that and English. I'm telling you, I would have been a valedictorian if those were all the classes we had, but math stepped in and messed it all up for me. So <laughs> it is early in the morning. I just woke up <laughs> not too long ago. To get this done, that should be good enough because we're gonna be painting black over. But first, we've got some Mayron liquid latex or whatever liquid latex you have. We're gonna pour this into a little, like a little petri dish. It's not a petri dish. It's actually it, it goes with something. <laughs> but I'm using it for that. We have some toilet paper. <laughs> it's little pieces of toilet paper. It's going to be kind of like we're paper macheing our face, but we want it to be kind of wrinkled. So it's not going to be smooth like a paper mache. We're just going to kind of place it and just going right around here. That's it. Now, if I were going out in this costume, I may want to paint more of my face just in case at some point I got tired of wearing the full cover and I wanted to take it off. I would still be in character when I took it off and not looking silly. So just a tip for you. Let's go ahead and start putting these pieces on. I got to go to work like in, a, in, <laughs> in an hour and a half or so. So I was actually up till about two <laughs> editing this video, but I slept like a baby. So that's awesome. I don't always sleep like that. So we're just putting this on our face. 
any way it goes on to create kind of a wrinkled texture like a mummy would be after many, many years in the crypt. And you're gonna get it on your fingers. It just rolls off, you know? So don't, ah, I got it all over myself. It's gonna, it just, once it dries and it dries fast, it just rolls right off. So don't worry about that. You make yourself a little rubber ball out of it. My cat wanted to come in. He doesn't want to come in. He just wants the door open. No closed doors in this house. Little nosy. They do the same thing with our um, patio door. And, and they obviously can't keep that one open because it's hot in Florida. There he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> you can't see him, I don't think, but. Maceo, why are you so nosy? All right, it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> this stuff wants to stick together, but you'll get it. See what I'm saying? It looks mummy-like. I decided to grab a tweezer. <laughs> it was getting too much on my hands. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it's fine, but this time, it was just annoying me a little bit, so. You wanna get that piece of toilet paper good and saturated so that it'll stick real good. We are going over our nose. Any part around here. We need a little more liquid latex. And we're gonna be waiting for this to dry. And then we're gonna be painting it black. And I'm gonna highlight with the Blythe Spirit. Cause I think that that will just black is gonna be like, okay. But with the Blythe Spirit, the goal is to kind of look like this guy here on the back a little bit. See, he's, he's black, but he's got some highlight. I'm sure they didn't plan that. <laughs> That's natural mummification going on, but he's got natural highlights. <laughs> yes. You can see how it's kind of looking like this you know so right, we've got a lot of inspiration going on over here thank goodness for life magazine coming through with the with the mummy issue i had to have it mummies are so cool my eyebrows should be okay because i've got the glue on there once you have it to about here where your forehead cheekbones now like i said you might want to do more of your face if you're going out but for me today i mean that depends though if you're good at wearing a costume all night and you're not going to take off your mask the the part that covers your face then and i am going to make a slit in it so that you can eat and drink uh i would make a like a slit in it so you'll be able to talk eat drink people can hear you you know it gets loud out at those parties so yeah make a slit in there so you can do all that but uh, it's, it's it's all dependent on you but for me today I'm done with about half of my face here forehead not even that much is gonna show but I just I'd rather be safe than sorry about this much will probably show I've got to wait for that to dry thoroughly before I start painting on it off camera I just wanted to see if the aqua was actually gonna work over the latex I think sometimes it's just being temperamental it seems to be working fine now. So, but what I'm doing is patting it on. That way it gets into all the creases. If you just are smearing it, it's gonna go on and look real watery. So you kinda wanna firm press it into your creases. That way it'll show up a lot better. Ooh, scary. Man, I love Halloween. You know, I need to go to a party or something. I need to get back into it a little bit. I am. I'm going to go to a party. I'm going to the party at my work. But, you know, maybe next year I'll do something. I don't know. This year was just so crazy. If you watched my videos from earlier this year, it's just been kind of a crazy year. I'm ready for a new year. I'm ready for a new year. Leave this one in the past. I mean, this one was similar to 2020. I mean, it was just that crazy. See how we've got some texture? I don't know how much of that texture you can see in the camera. But when we put the Blythe Spirit, it's just gonna kinda, 
you know, bring the texture to life a little bit. You don't want your sponge super wet, just a little damp. If it's too wet, it'll go on real watery. You could probably do your Phantom of the Opera makeup like this too. You know, half of his face is, but I think he's flesh tones, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So you can do a Phantom of the Opera like this as well. With the toilet paper and the liquid latex. Just use your flesh tone latex and probably highlight with a red or even a rose color to make it look like burns. I believe Lon Chaney was the Phantom of the Opera. He has some really great characters too. Lon Chaney, Bella Lugosi, he was the Dracula. Before Gary Oldman did it and psh, knocked it right out of the park. <laughs> I loved Gary Oldman as Dracula. He was great. Maybe I'll do that one eventually. I think I want to line my waterline with black pencil. This is what's here, so I'll use this. Not very good, huh? Not terrible, I guess. It's kind of messed up my makeup a little bit. It's okay if a little bit of the latex is showing through. As you could see in some of those pictures, they're kind of different, different shades of death. <laughs> so you got your real dark areas, your brown areas. You know, they've been mummified for a very long time. So let's try some of this Blythe Spirit over the black and then we'll be done with our makeup, believe it or not. I used this color to do Zoltar, the Blythe Spirit. It's a really nice color. It's not showing up very good right now. Well, it shows up enough, you know what I mean? That black is real dark, but kind of gives it a, just a slight lighter appearance so that those wrinkles show up. If you wanted to, you could pat on a white cream makeup <coughs> if you wanted the these lighter parts to show up more and then go over it with the Blythe Spirit. This is really old, so I'm not 100% sure Ben Nye still makes this color, but you might want to get a light beige if they don't, like a light beige color. Even a flesh tone would work. And that's, that's our makeup. I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna put a little more black here in the creases where it's showing up real light and uh, put my costume on. All dressed up and ready for photos. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's look. A classic Egyptian mummy. If you haven't already, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video. I do have another look coming up for you on Sunday. That does it for today's episode. I'll see you next time. Happy Halloween!